Welcome to Really Old Movies, everyone. I'm your host, Harrison Scullin, and today my guest Nathan Hale and I will be talking about our top 10 1940s films. And so without further ado, I'll go ahead and bring on Nathan. Hey, right. Harrison. How's it going? It's going good. Awesome. Thank you for having me on tonight. I'm wearing my Cary Grant shirt for the occasion. Ooh, nice, nice. <laughs> I'm just waving. <laughs> <laughs> Is he on top? Is it on like a building or something or? Well, I, I don't understand the shirt at all. I just saw it and I was like, well, I need to own that. So yes. <laughs> yeah, no, I was like sitting on top of a building, just waving. I wore it to the gym once and a guy was like, Hey, I love your shirt. And I don't know if it's because it's Cary Grant or because it's just like, it's a, it's just a fun shirt. Like it's just a guy <laughs> waving at you. So still don't know to this day if he actually knew who it was, but he liked it. So we're going, going with it. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I actually have a Cary Grant shirt, too, that I made at, at school. It says, like, oh, U.S. Man. Grant on it, and he's, like, wearing sunglasses and American flag. It's pretty funny. That, um, that is awesome. Yeah, maybe I'll try and find it and show it later on. Yeah. All right, but why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and your channel and what it is you do on YouTube. Yes. Can you still hear me? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, cool. I just switched to my mic. Sorry. Uh Yes. Yeah, so my name is Nathan Hale. I uh, try to talk about all things classics. I realized, like, I love movies so much. And I realized that a lot of the videos I was posting were all from the black and white era. So I was like, why not just roll with this and rebrand it from Nathan Hale movies to Nathan Hale classics. So that's where we are now. I haven't been able to post a lot lately just because of grad school kicking my butt. But oh, yeah. it's been, <laughs> I, it doesn't mean that I haven't been watching movies. And so yeah, uh, big fan of the classics um, and specifically the 40s, too. It's funny that um, I'm glad you invited me for this one because I was looking at my letterboxed stats and my top three decades are the um, 30s, 40s and or sorry, 40s, 50s and 60s. So, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, very fitting. <laughs> no, perfect. Yeah, well, I'm glad to have you on, man. I, I'm really excited for this because I know. Like you said, you're a fan of classic movies as well, because yeah. it seems like everyone and their grandmother is talking about the newest Marvel movie, right? You know. Yep, exactly. <laughs> no, but that's great. Well, we're going to get into our top 10 list, and since Nathan is our guest here, we'll go over his list first. And so I'm going to bring it up here. All right, so this is your number 10. Why don't you give a little synopsis about it and why you like this film? Yeah, absolutely. So my number 10, as you can see, is Miracle on 34th Street. And this is a movie that I didn't see for the first time until maybe two, well, maybe about three or four years ago. And I try to watch it every year since because it is just such a feel good movie. Um, if you're not aware of if you haven't seen the movie, um, it's basically the story of believing in Kris Kringle or Santa Claus in a world that is more pessimistic. Mm -hmm. It's about being more optimistic and has a great message with like bringing the Christmas spirit in. Um, Ed Wynn, I think his name is, is an amazing Santa Claus. I know he was nominated. I think he even won an Oscar for this role. I, I don't know if he won, but I know he was nominated. So yeah, all around... See. Yeah, it's just all around a great movie to watch around Christmas, especially if you're looking for that movie to make you feel really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's a great pick. I won't get too much into it because I also have that on my list. But nice. yeah, I agree with everything you said. All right, let's move on to your number nine. Okay, cool. So number nine, we have an Alfred Hitchcock movie. Um, Alfred Hitchcock is my favorite director of all time. And so... <laughs> this isn't the only movie you'll be seeing on the list from him, but shadow of a doubt is it's just a great look at a, a typical family with the dark secret. And I love the way that this movie progresses. There's a lot of mystery to it. There's plenty of tension. I mean, it was made by the master of suspense. So you could imagine there's definitely some suspenseful scenes, but Teresa Wright and uh, Joseph, Cotton. I hope I remember that name. Um, yeah, that sounds right. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the one who plays the uncle. 
Um, both of them are really good. Plus, I'm a little biased to it because Henry Travers is in it and he plays Clarence from It's Wonderful Life. So oh, it's fun yeah. seeing him in this movie play the father instead of an angel. But yeah, just a really good movie and earlier, earlier ish in Hitchcock's career. So really well made. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't had a chance to see this one yet, but I actually have it on VHS. It's ready to go. <laughs> hey, nice. Yeah, that's the way to watch. Not really. Don't watch it that way. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> But, um, yeah, it's one I have on my list that I'm hoping to watch at some point. So, yeah. Yeah, it's I would definitely it. recommend it. It's, uh, I think it's, I think it's still in my top 10 Hitchcock. And if not, it's like 10, it's like 11 or 10. It's around that area. So it's definitely a great, a very good movie. Awesome. All right. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, cool. So, um, first of a few James Stewart movies you'll also see on the list. So <laughs> uh, for those watching that don't know, Jimmy Stewart is my favorite actor of all time. And so uh, I love his movies, particularly his movies in the 40s when he was a little younger. I don't know what it is, but I just really like it, young Jimmy Stewart. But The Shop Around the Corner is another feel-good Christmas movie directed by Ernst Lubitsch. And it takes place in, I can't, I can't tell you the exact country, but it's not America. Can't remember the exact country. And uh, if you're familiar with You Got Mail with Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan, this is the original version. And so um, two workers are pen pals. They severely dislike each other in real life, but they're falling in love over their letters being written. And so it's a very ironic story. Um, and it taking place around Christmas time definitely gives it some extra points too, but just a really feel good movie that I love watching. Yeah. And funny you bring up, you've got mail. Don't they, isn't the name of the shop in that movie, the shop around the corner, like Meg Ryan shop. Oh, I don't know. Actually, that's a good question. That'd be, uh, so I haven't seen shop or I haven't seen you've got mail since I was maybe like 11 or 12. And oh, so okay. I just know they're connected, but that would be a really funny, like little nod to the movie if that were the case. Yeah, I want to say it was because I remember cool. when I learned. Yeah, I remember when I learned about this movie. I was like, "Oh, that's a nice tie-in to it." That's super cool. Yeah, I didn't know about that. That's awesome. Yeah. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Cool. So. Number seven is The Mortal Storm, and this is another James Stewart one. And Margaret Sullivan, they're both in Shop Around the Corner and this movie. Um, so this movie is a very underrated uh, Jimmy Stewart movie. I The only reason I found out about it is because I'm a fan of him, so I was just trying to watch more of his movies one year. I discovered it maybe two or three years ago, and it is about – a small town in, I want to say, I believe it's a small town in Germany between, it's before World War II, but it's while Hitler is rising in power. And it shows the trend of a town beginning, you know, being in unison, loving one another, and slowly the fall of how following a leader, a dictator leads to the breaking of friendships and even family relationships. So what starts as like a really good movie actually has a pretty bleak um, remainder of the runtime, but it's so underrated that at this point I love it because it's almost like my little undiscovered gem, if you will. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. yeah, whenever I get, whenever someone watches it and they tell me like, Oh my gosh, like, wow, it really is good. I'm so happy because it deserves more recognition and I have pestered the criterion collection for years to add it to their collection. So maybe someday it will be added. Yeah. Oh, looks like we got some questions here for you, Nathan. Uh, yeah. First, yeah. first one is, will he be watching flea tonight? <laughs> yeah. So that's my good friend, Michelle. We oh, have okay. a deal. Um, if Michelle watched the movie, Marty, the best picture winner, then I in return watch flea. And Michelle, it's funny you ask that because I was just watching it earlier today. Um, haven't finished it yet. I hope to watch it tonight to watch it this weekend at least, but I'm about 20 minutes into it. Um, and then, yeah, the other comment. Yeah, yeah. Michelle's a big fan of John Hurt. And so John Hurt mm -hmm. for Michelle is uh, Jimmy Stewart for me. Oh, okay. Who's, who's your favorite actor, Harrison? Ah, uh, 
I hate that question, but <laughs> <laughs> um, and you're live on the spot too. I know, right? Well, just off the top of my head, just because of how many movies I've seen with him, I'd have to say Cary Grant. Um, hey, nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just getting one, right? Just because of how versatile of an actor he is, you know, mm -hmm. you see him in like darker, more sinister roles, but then you'll see him in kind of screwball comedy roles. So yeah. Like, he has quite the range for, for an actor. Very true. I like him a lot, too. All right. We'll move on to the next one. Sweet. So my number, I, just, I think this is number six. Um, I think it's number five. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> I don't have okay, cool. <laughs> Whatever number that we are on is Pinocchio. To me, this is the epitome of what Disney is. Um, it's, you know, I, I've heard criticisms of it before with that. It's just kind of a strange, weird movie. But this is like, to me, the message behind it and the story of it and the iconic when you wish upon a star like that's disney right there when you hear mm -hmm. when you watch every disney movie you hear the when you wish upon a star song play at the beginning of the movie um and it, it's just uh when i think of like true disney um even like lion king's my favorite but that's like the mm -hmm. renaissance when i'm thinking of like true classical disney pinocchio is the one that comes to my mind i love it and so uh, everyone knows what pinocchio is so i feel like i don't have to go into like synopsis or anything <laughs> Sure, yeah. No, I, I <laughs> it, it's funny how you bring up uh, how some people kind of criticize it with it being kind of weird and stuff. It's mm -hmm. like, well, have you read the book? It's even worse. <laughs> I Yeah, I haven't even read the book, but I've heard, like, doesn't he, like, step on Jiminy Cricket or something? How do, like, yeah, he, like, before. kills him or something, yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So we'll stick with the Disney movie. <laughs> yeah, no, the Disney one is a lot lighter. <laughs> Oh boy, I better block this person. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just saw that. Cool. <laughs> yeah, they just want to get their opinion in on Pinocchio. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, number five for me is Casablanca. And uh, I mean, Casablanca, I saw it for the first time. In 2015, and I remember when I watched it, my first thought was, this is like the iconic Casablanca that everyone talks about. And it wasn't until I rewatched it in a class in college. It was a humanities class where we were focused specifically on like film history for the, the week. We watched Casablanca, and it wasn't until then that I realized, wow, like this movie really is as good as everyone says because we learned a little bit about the marketing behind it, the filming of it, the time it was released how crucial the movie was i think there's a there really is like a reason why casablanca is as good as it is uh, not only i mean like take away the iconic like love story and everything but the time it was released was very crucial for history i, I can't tell you the exact history lesson i just remember learning that it was a very pivotal release and an important release and it's just a good story too i love the setting i like the characters they're all very fascinating and Humphrey Bogart's uh, just iconic in it. Very memorable lines in it. For sure. I won't go too much into it too because it's also on my list. But Okay, cool. Um, but what I like about this too, like you were saying when it was released and all that, if I remember right, it came out the same time the Allies actually invaded Africa, like North Africa. Mm -hmm. so like, I think so. Yeah, so it's kind of like a, a victorious film too in that aspect. Yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, it's a great film. Ooh, the awkward actor. I will always respect Pinocchio for that donkey scene that has traumatized generations of <laughs> children. It will continue to. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that that has definitely traumatized me too. A horrifying scene. Even as an adult, it's scary. Yeah. yeah that's a creepy movie. All right. Move on to the next one. Okay, we have another Alfred Hitchcock movie for my number four spot, Notorious. Uh, funny how Cary Grant and Ingrid Bergman are, and Claude Rains, they're both in Casablanca yeah. and Notorious. So fitting pair right there, like those two movies grouped together. But um, Notorious, I mean, 
you just have to appreciate it. It's a movie that every time I watch it, I like it more and more. And the plot is all around espionage. Um, and espionage just fascinates me. I mean, mm -hmm. I was named after a famous spy in the Revolutionary War, Nathan Hale. And I don't know if that's like why espionage fascinates me. Like from a young age, knowing I was named after him, I just automatically started like being fascinated by this. But espionage is so interesting and Notorious is all about, you know, you can't blow your cover uh, and have to get away with spying. And so it's basically about America spying on um, Germany and the the things that Hitchcock the things that he's able to accomplish are just very impressive. Um, the The most cited scene is that one scene where it's the the camera, the one take scene from the top of the stairs goes all the way down to Ingrid Bergman's hand holding the key. Um, all filmed in, in one take and just like revolutionary for the time. So can't help but appreciate it. Definitely some tensions, some uh, suspenseful moments in this one too. Yeah. Man, I, I need to see this because it's not streaming anywhere, so I'm always frustrated. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's on the Criterion Collection, so um, next fall, maybe. Yeah, so that's coming up in July, I think. Yeah. They'll announce yeah. July titles on Monday. They were supposed to announce them today, but they're delaying it. <laughs> oh, keeping us on the edge of our seat, guys. I know, exactly. <laughs> All right, let's see. Oh, Piranha Kingdom's here. It says Claude Rains is the best character of Notorious. Yeah, um, Claude Rains, it's like, <laughs> it's interesting because you don't want to root for Claude Rains, but like you kind of, I, I don't, if you haven't seen, so you haven't seen it, Harrison? No, I haven't. Uh -uh. Okay, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but Claude Rains plays the villain of the movie, but like you don't want to root for him, but you kind of feel bad for him too. So uh, I agree. I, um, actually, you know what? I probably would agree that he's the best character of Notorious. I like, um, I never thought about my favorite character, but like, if I had to choose one, I probably would also agree with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, he's a great actor too. Very, uh, uh, what's the word? Underrated, I think. Yeah. Yeah. If you're looking for a uh, Claude Rains role, then here comes Mr. Gordon. He plays like, um, an angel. And he just like is, like is the most warming presence. Like normally he's very I feel like he's very um, firm and uh, kind of like take no nonsense. But in that movie, here comes Mr. Jordan. He's more of like a happy angel. It's just it's cool seeing him in a different character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. We'll move on to the next one. Okay, so for my number three, we have this little movie you've never heard of, Citizen Kane. <laughs> have you have you seen this one, Harrison? I have, yes. Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, so Citizen Kane is another movie like Casablanca, or sorry, like Notorious, that every time you see it, it gets better for me at least. Um, I think that if a lot of people, especially if, if anyone's like me, you watch it around high school when you find out you're getting into movies and when you finish it, you're like, that's considered the best movie of all time. At least yeah. that was my experience. Yeah. And it wasn't until the second time I watched it, I was like, okay, like it is a good movie. The third time I'm like, wow, this is like one of the best movies. And then the fourth time I'm like, this is the best. And so it just keeps getting yeah. better every time you watch it. And funny enough, the last two viewings I've had for Citizen Kane have both been in the theaters. Um, yeah, so I watched it back in 2018. Local theater was just playing it. And then I watched it again this last September because it was the anniversary for it. And so, yeah, yeah I think it was the, it would have been the 80th anniversary, I believe. So, yeah, I think so. Citizen Kane, I don't even know what to say about it. Like, it just is, it just is Citizen Kane. It's just an amazing movie. And, um, I guess what I'll say is uh, I'm impressed first off that Orwell's is able to make a movie at such a young, young time in his career. He's so naive in the movie business and everything. I think this was his first movie first like of everything. And yeah. um, he just, it's amazing. Like there's so much to love about Citizen Kane that I could take <laughs> the rest of the time just talking about it. So we should probably right. move on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, Real briefly, I, 
I recently also just saw it in theaters, and oh, cool. it. it's a great way of seeing it. So if you ever have the chance, guys, check it out in yeah. theaters. It's really cool. Absolutely. All right, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so coming in at my number two is another Alfred Hitchcock movie and another James Stewart movie, They one of their <laughs> team-ups. <laughs> in fact, this is their only team-up from the 40s, but Rope is amazing. Um, have you seen this one, Harrison? No, I haven't. I've, again, it's not streaming, and I need to buy it. Um, yeah, it's frustrating when it's not streaming. I wish more of these old movies streamed. But um, So Rope is a really fun movie because it – it's one of the original movies to have a one take gimmick. It doesn't have only one take, but there are only eight takes in the whole movie. And what's even more impressive is movies like 1917 and Birdman. I'm not, um, uh, I don't want to take away any praise because those are magnificent achievements in movie and like cinema history. But um, I, I just find it a little bit more impressive that rope was made in the forties and they were very limited on how much they could film. And so they film as much as they can on one reel. And then they would stop the cut and move on to the next take. And so Rope was, it's either eight or nine takes the entire movie. And so the actors have to know their lines. When you're watching it, you can notice the scenes where they stopped filming. But it's just very, uh, it's very impressive because the movie does take place in real time. And so it's fitting for the plot. Um, James Stewart does amazing, and Alfred Hitchcock does amazing at accomplishing this. So I love it. I, I'm going to rewatch it soon, too, because I've been thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I had a point, but I forgot it. Dang it. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. Well, I, I need to check this movie out, though, because I like, I like gimmicky things, right? <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. But that's how you do check it out. Let me know. Yes, we will do. All right. I think this is your number one now. So yes. Without further ado, drum roll. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I almost wore my Wonderful Life shirt. And oh, everyone knows it's my favorite movie. I uh, still went with the Cary Grant to try not to give away spoilers. But yeah, It's a Wonderful Life is not only my favorite movie of the 40s. It's my favorite movie of all time. When I told some of my friends that I was going to be ranking this with you right away, they were like, oh, gee, I wonder what number one is. And I'm like, yeah, I know. Right. I, know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't like I had to be true to myself. I'm not going to, you know, uh, throne a different movie. It is. It's a Wonderful Life. Um, it's oh, oh, really quickly. Bernardo, the movie geek is in the chat. Hey, Bernardo. Oh. Um, so anyways, <laughs> uh, sorry. Bernardo and Michelle, the two in the chat, are the ones that were like, wonder what his number one is. <laughs> so it's funny. <laughs> um, but it's, fun. it's, it's a Wonderful Life is just such a great example at accomplishing character development, accomplishing, you know, a well-made story and getting the audience attached to the story. I think the biggest thing it has going for it that, like, has me coming back for more is just a simple message on how life really is wonderful, how everyone in life has you know a purpose and uh james stewart gives not only his best performance of his career but my bet my favorite performance of all time from like any actor i just mm -hmm. like what he does here in wonderful life um Donna reed also does great the whole cast is amazing lionel barrymore as the evil mr potter just everyone gives it their all and it's a movie that i've argued in the past isn't isn't like it doesn't have to be watched at Christmas time because it's really only the last few minutes. Like the last 30 or so minutes take place on Christmas Eve, but really the last like five minutes are Christmas related kind of. And yeah. so I've watched this movie before in August and have still enjoyed it just as much. But um, if, if I, I imagine if people are watching this stream where we talk about 10 movies from 1940 that we love, then they've probably seen this movie. But if you haven't yeah. rare chance, you haven't seen it's a wonderful life. This is my highest recommendation of any of my movies. Yeah. Well said. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I've been praising it for years. And so I'm ready any moment to just rave about Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting, too, just the history behind it, like how it went into public domain. So then all these TV stations bought it. That's why everyone yeah. watches it, you know? <laughs> and that's kind of what put it on the in the spotlight. Like initially, it, 
I don't, I want to say it wasn't a box office success. I mean, it still got Oscar nominations. Um, James Stewart was nominated. Uh, the movie was nominated for best picture, but everything, it basically lost everything to the best years of our lives, which wonderful life is a lot better in my opinion, but we won't, that's another topic. <laughs> It's interesting how they have very similar titles. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, and also Best Years of Our Lives. Um, it's also interesting because that's about – have you ever seen Best Years of Our Lives? No, I don't think so. Okay, so it's a longer one. So, what was that? Is that a Cecil B. DeMille film? Uh, I want to say it's William Wyler, but you, oh. I, I, I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, So that movie, it's interesting because – that movie's all about war veterans coming home from World War II and acclimating back to life, like dealing with PTSD or dealing with like one character is missing an arm, I'm pretty sure. And like in real life, he has two. So like they actually hired like an actual war veteran to play the role. But um, and then Wonderful Life is interesting because it was James Stewart's first movie after World War II. So they're actually they're pretty similar, but I just think Wonderful Life hits me harder way harder and also i've only seen best years of our lives once so it's unfair but it just hits me harder yeah all right okay it is william wyler okay cool. okay cool i wasn't for sure all, all right, right. Hey, it's in michelle's top 10 the best years of our lives oh look at that yeah i, I still need to check that one out too all right well, that was a great list you got there, man. I'm impressed. Thanks. Yeah, if you're looking for recommendations, there you go. I'm excited to see yours. All right. So let's bring up mine. So um, I would make changes to it uh, just because I watched a movie recently I really, really liked. But oh, really? Yes. But I'll talk about that at the end. Okay. Um, so I'll bring up the list as of two weeks ago. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. So my number 10 has got to be Ichabod and Mr. Toad. Yeah, it's kind of a silly movie, but I really like the Mr. Toad segment. I think that's my yeah. favorite favorite segment in this film. And to me, it's the best package film Disney did in this era. Yeah. Because, you know, they did Melody Time, Make My Music, and they're kind of okay. But this one, I think, is the best one they did. Mm -hmm. and, and I love the ride at Disneyland, the Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. It's great Halloween watch too. Yeah, it's perfect for Halloween. Um, and I love Ooh. Bing Crosby. He's got a great voice. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, that's my number ten. Cool. Number nine, another Disney film, uh, Three Caballeros. Nice. Yeah, this one has hit home a lot more now because you know I served my mission for my church in well Arizona, but I spoke Spanish, so like. I get a lot more of the songs and a lot more of the references now than I ever did before. So nice. I, I connected a lot more on the cultural level, but I also love Donald Duck. He's like my favorite Disney character too. So yeah, he's the best. Kind of I, didn't, I didn't either. I didn't know or I completely forgot you served in Arizona. That's super cool. It's I'm not in Arizona right now, but that's where I'm from. I'm in Utah, but that's right. yeah, that's, that's, right. that's awesome. Yeah. I, I love Arizona. I actually might move there at some point. It's a great state, hey, man. Nice. That's <laughs> awesome. All right. Next one. Another Disney film. I swear this is... I, hey, I'm, loving your list. <laughs> I'm loving your list so far because it, it made me sad that I only included Pinocchio for my Disney film because, like, I love Bambi. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah. So, anyway, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> no worries. Um this film also kind of hits home because I grew up in kind of a foresty rural community and, you know, seeing deer and all that all the time. I really connected that way. And uh, I also really like it's kind of kind of like how Lion King is the circle of life. This one is, too. You see the life of Bambi as a baby all until he's a grown up buck. I really like that aspect. And just the beautiful animation, too. It's just yeah. gorgeously made film. Have you ever noticed that Lion King and Bambi start the same and end the same? With, no, I haven't noticed that. <laughs> yeah, with the prince being born in the animal kingdom and then ending with them being married and having a child. 
Oh my goodness. A little circle of life right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> also, I think, uh, okay, Michelle asked a question. Let's see. Um, um, so I told you. them to prepare a top 10 when they watch the video. So they're wondering when they should uh, put oh, this. Okay. Uh -huh. You can put it in right now. We can read it at as we go along or at the end, whichever you guys think. Um, I probably won't, honestly, won't get to it until we finish the list here. So we'll spend Great. some time on that after we finish the list here. How about that? Sounds good to me. All right. So then there's Bambi. The next one, Susan Kane. Um, there it is. Yep, there it is. It's terrific, as it says there. Yeah, um, wow. I, lo I love everybody's <laughs> talking about it. It's terrific. That's <laughs> amazing. I mean, I don't know if I would use that for this kind of movie because that yeah. makes it sound like it's a happy, great movie. It's really not. <laughs> it's pretty. It's like actually really sad. It's almost noir. Like it's almost a yeah. film noir. But I don't know what else to add other than I have really love this movie. I also watched it in high school for the first time. And I remember doing an essay about it. So I had to like break it down a lot more. Okay. So I've probably seen it too many times now because... I know everything that happens in it. It's not as exciting as the first time. Yeah. That's why it's kind of lower. But I recognize the achievements it had. And it yeah. Did. All right. The next one, Miracle on 34th Street. Yeah. So we got some uh, overlap here. Um, I also just watched this, say, two years ago. It was the first time. And I loved it. I loved the, the story of it. I loved how everyone's trying to find out if he really is Santa Claus or not. Mm -hmm. I thought it was kind of a cute way how that was proven or wasn't proven. I won't spoil mm -hmm. it, but I like that. Um, question about that, though. Have you seen the 90s version of it? I've seen pieces of it when I was a kid. I know that the girl from Matilda is in it, and I know that uh, Richard Attenborough, I think his name is, I know that he, I'm pretty sure he plays Chris Kringle in it. But I haven't, like, I don't think I've ever seen it all the way through. So okay. it's something that like, even this last December, I was like, I got to watch it this season and I didn't get to it. So. Yeah. I'm kind of hesitant because I liked this movie and I don't want to, you know, I don't yeah. want this newer one to taint that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, from what I understand, this one is considered like the best one. There's a very underrated one with Thomas Mitchell. That's like only an hour. And that one like takes out a ton of important story elements. So I wouldn't recommend watching that one, but <laughs> yeah, this one, this one's good. Okay. Well, yeah. There's that one. Oh, we got some comments here. Bambi is Disney's watership town. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. Yes. And then I was surprised at how sad and jury Citizen Kane was. Yeah. It, it's really a sad film. Mm -hmm. All right. Next is Philadelphia story. Nice. Um, love this one with Cary Grant and Jimmy Stewart. So both are very really? nice. Yeah. Um, but I got to say, Catherine Hepburn is actually the best part of the movie. She's hilarious. Yeah. And I love when she's trying to talk like a, a socialite and all of that. She's like super uh, stuck up. It's, it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. And my favorite scene, though, is the very beginning of the film. Uh, she and Cary Grant, they're divorcing. And she just snaps his golf clubs. <laughs> She's like, and he's super mad. He doesn't say anything. He just grabs her face and shoves her to the ground. <laughs> oh my gosh. I totally forgot about this. Yeah, no, I definitely laughed out loud when I first saw that. <laughs> and There's every no other watch. Yeah. It's no so dialogue expensive. at all, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so good. But yes, I recommend it. This is a... I want to say it's pre-World War II for uh, Jimmy Stewart, because you said it's yeah. more of life was his first, right? Yeah. Yeah, so this one was actually, I think this movie's 1940 exactly. I think this one, because I'm pretty sure he lost for Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, and he won the next year for this movie. Okay. Some okay. people have a theory that they only gave it to him because they regret not giving it to him for Mr. Smith, which I like to believe because Mr. Smith's amazing, but anyways. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But... Anyways, fun comedy. I recommend yeah. checking it out. And, Have you uh, ever seen um, High Society? That's the remake, right? 
Yeah, I didn't even know it was a remake until I was watching it. And I was like, this is a very similar story to Philadelphia. And I was like, wow, it's a remake. Okay, it's like a musical. But I was just wondering. That's a good one, too. Yeah, no, I haven't seen it yet. It's on my uh, HBO Max list, but nice. I want to see that one, too. It's a, it's a good remake. It actually works. Awesome. All right. The next one, The Great Ooh. Dictator. Nice. <laughs> uh, I, love, I love this Chaplin film. I'm actually more of a Buster Keaton fan myself, but this one I think is one of Chaplin's best. Mm -hmm. um, I love like, you know, how he plays Adenoid Hinkle and also the, the poor guy. Yeah. There's like a title card or something that says, it's eerie how similar they look to each other. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally Charlie Chaplin. It's hilarious. <laughs> and I just love how ridiculous he was as Adenoid Hinkle and, how mm. funny of a storyline it was but i really like the speech at the end that he does yeah i think that was a really powerful moment still applicable today oh definitely <laughs> so good yeah all right and then the next one fantasia i swear this nice. is the last disney movie <laughs> hey nice nice too. um like i said with bambi beautiful animation in this one um especially at the very end I don't remember the name of it, but it's the one with, like, the gargoyle on the mountain. Um, mm -hmm. I love the music that they have playing with that, too, you know. They use, like, classical music and Strauss mm -hmm. and, I believe, Tarkovsky or whatever. Beautifully done, beautifully animated. And I love how, like, it was visual of darkness overcoming the valley, but then you have, like, the nuns singing, and then the sun comes up, and that brings the light back. So I really liked that, that visual and, and the metaphor of that mm. i'm trying to remember which it is is it it's not night on bald avenue is it it might be that one that sounds fun. yeah i feel like they had like some sort of creepy title in it uh yeah maybe the night was the creepy part i don't know um i'm trying to google it right now but anyways yeah. sorry we can move on <laughs> yeah. but anyways great film Love the music in it. That's probably the highlight for me, too, is the music. Beautifully. Mm -hmm. Oh, right on Bald Mountain. Okay, yeah, there we go. Is that it? Yeah. Okay, cool. Great film. All right, yeah. Next one. There's my number two. <laughs> it's one. Yeah. Uh, love this movie, okay. too. <laughs> it's okay, yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> fine. Fun movie. No, I, I also really love this movie. I actually had a hard time deciding between this and my number one, but I I just love the the kind of the redemption aspect of the film. You know, how yeah. George goes from being kind of depressed and kind of angry at his family and then redeeming himself because of his good qualities and his good character. So mm -hmm. I really like that. And... uh. There's a lot of funny moments in it too, like when they're dancing with each other and then they fall into the pool. That's pretty yeah. funny. And yeah, it's just a great wholesome film. Everyone needs to watch. I, I really believe that. Absolutely. All right, my number one drum roll. <laughs> Casablanca. Yeah, nice. Yes, I love this movie, um, but I didn't the first time I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get it nice. the first time. But each subsequent viewing of it, I've appreciated the story, the dialogue, the depth of the characters and their motives. Mm -hmm. Um like how you know how there's like people being uh I guess transferred out of Casablanca or not Casablanca, but Rick's restaurant. Yeah. And they're like, Do you know that's going on here? And Rick's like, No, I don't care what they do. But then you realize no, he actually does care. That's why he lets it happen. But he has to put on this cold demeanor so no one can see through that and arrest him and stuff. So I love that. Love yes. Rick. Uh, or I guess Humphrey Bogart. Yeah. And, uh, I also like the the Peter Lore, uh, I guess. Is it cameo? He wasn't in it for very long. He's not in it very long, but he has a small role. Yeah. I don't know. He's just a funny character actor. I love seeing him pop up here and there. Yeah, agreed. But yeah, if you haven't seen Casablanca, you need to check it out. 
great World War II drama, I guess kind of noir. I don't know if I'd call it noir quite, but yeah, yeah. It, it's a great film. Agreed. All right. Well, those are our top 10 list, guys. So go ahead and put yours in the chat, and we'll talk about those as well if we've seen them or not. Because that, that moment, I knew the film won them over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got my shells coming. Here we go. Number 10, The Lady Eve. Ooh, I haven't seen that one yet. Number nine, Lifeboat. That's an Alfred oh, Hitchcock one. That's a Hitchcock? Okay. Yeah. Detour. Detour is another Hitchcock. Thing. Detour is not a Hitchcock, but it is a Criterion. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Number seven, Maltese Falcon. Oh, I'm going to be watching that one soon. I've always wanted nice. to see that one. That's a good one. Let's see, number six, Row. Okay. Another yeah. Fan here. Number five, Great Dictator. Hey, another Great Dictator fan. There you go. There you go. Notorious. There we go. Number three, Bicycle Thieves. Ooh. So that one I just watched recently for the very first time. It was really sad. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's not a happy movie. No, it was not what I was expecting at all. So yeah. I, I just didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a wonderful life movie. That's for sure. Oh, it's like the opposite of wonderful. Life. Yeah, it's kind of like Pursuit of Happiness, but in the forties. Yeah. Okay, number two, it's a wonderful life, hey. Eh? There it is. Nice. Number one, Philadelphia Story. Yeah, that's a good one. Nice. Michelle, I've seen your whole. Oh wait, that's not even Michelle's list. That's Bernardo's list. Oops. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that. Bernardo, sorry, I've seen your whole list except for Detour. It was like funny because Michelle's like, okay, here's my top 10. And then Bernardo commented his. And so oh, that uh, is me. <laughs> I got mixed up. But um, yeah, I've seen everything but Detour. But amazing list. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a great list. All right. So now that we've talked about each of our individual lists, Nathan, what are your overall thoughts on the 1940s in film? Mm -hmm. It is a great decade for film. Um, it like like I said earlier, my letterbox stats has 1940s as one of the highest rated decades for me. And it was hard making a list. I mean, obviously I knew my number one, but when it came to like the nine out of tens that are towards the bottom of the list, it was hard choosing. I actually had um the one I had at number eleven was to be or not to be from Ernst Lubitsch. I don't know if you've seen that one, but um that one's another funny it's kind of like Great Dictator where it's a satirical Nazi movie. Oh okay. um, yeah, so it's really funny. But um, but even then, like there are other movies like The Dark of Night, which is this creepy like anthology movie that's so good. And other James Stewart movies I could argue for. Um, but it's just a really great decade. Um, and I'm actually watching one either tonight or tomorrow for the Peter Bogdanovich challenge, Out of the mm -hmm. Past. Have you seen Out of the Past? I haven't, no. Okay, I've never seen it either, so I'm intrigued to see it, but... I'm supposed to watch it um, for the challenge. So, yeah, uh, I've been struggling with that challenge. It's hard to find all those movies. <laughs> yeah, it is. I um, I've been using the library as my guide. <laughs> my local library has been helping me a lot. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I've just been using Canopy. That's uh, basically a library oh, nice. service. You have uh, some of the films on there. Both um, Michelle and Toronto Kingdom have started their top 10, but haven't finished their top 10. <laughs> it's like, what is it, please? <laughs> well, we'll read uh, Michelle's first. Let's see. Number 10, Saludos Amigos. Ooh, that's a that's a good Disney one. Oh, did, um, is Michelle's on there now? I think so. It look, let's see. It's yeah, message it's retracted. Okay, it's not loading for me. It says message retracted. But, oh, oh, there it is. Okay, it's there now. It's there now. Okay. Yeah, let's see. So number 10, Saludos Amigos. That's a good one. You know, I say about that one and uh, uh, Three Caballeros, because I guess FDR, he had Disney make those movies. So it's like that's <laughs> FDR's foreign policy plan. That's what those movies are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Let's see, number nine, Maltese Falcon. Nice. Number eight, Beauty and the Beast. I just watched that one. It's pretty good. Have you seen that yeah. one? Yeah, very impressive. Like, that movie, I, I remember when I saw it, the thing I told my friend Jackson after watching, I was like, I think the one word I would describe is just use the one word I would use to describe it is just like magical. Like mm -hmm. they, it was so good at bringing that story to life. Like the hands holding the candles and yeah, the mirror and the transformation, all of it was just, I've only seen it once, but like, I, I definitely agree with that being a top 10 contender. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just wasn't in a good mood. I didn't like it very much. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> nice. I've seen movies. I've seen other movies from that director. Like I saw Orpheus and I didn't like Orpheus. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I was in a bad mood for Orpheus, but for Beauty and the Beast, I like, I loved it. Yeah. I really like the makeup work though. That was really impressive. Yeah. You can't help but just like appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Let's see number seven, Dumbo. Good one. Classic. Classic yes. Dumbo. Casablanca. There we go. Nice. Okay. Best years of our lives. Citizen Kane. Pinocchio, Bambi, It's a Wonderful Life. That's a great list right there. A lot of Disney movies, too. We seem to all be pretty consistent with our lists, um, yeah. which is awesome. Although I'm looking at 10 and 9 for Toronto Kingdom, and it's already two movies that we haven't mentioned at all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, okay, let's see. Who's here? 10, Silence of the Sea. Ooh, I haven't heard of that one. That one is a criterion. I only know it, I don't know it by the, the French title. Um, and I want to see, it. I almost bought it one sale, but I didn't go through with it. Okay. Have you seen the grapes of wrath? No, but I do like John Ford's other films. I really like Stagecoach. Yeah. yeah. Grapes of wrath was something I did a Henry Ford, uh, month back in February. And so I watched grapes of wrath for that. And it is a very good movie. I think actually Henry Ford should have won the Oscar for that one, but he didn't. Yeah. Is that also when you did 12 Angry Men? Is that from the same time? No, so 12 Angry Men is a 50s movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it is the same actor. <laughs> right, right, okay. Let's see. For Beauty and the Beast, it's like you are watching a stage play. And I was mesmerized. I agree with that. It definitely yeah. felt like a stage play. Very true. Um, different scenery changes. Okay. Toronto's number eight, The Raven. Ooh. Yep. I may be thinking of the uh, Vincent Price one. I don't think I'm thinking of the correct one. Yeah, I've heard of this one. That's another criterion, but I think it's an only DVD release. Not a print something, so I've never seen it. But I like HD Clues. I don't know if you've seen Diabolik or Wages of Fear, but hmm. they're like very suspense. He's known as like the French master of suspense. And so oh, yeah, okay. I trust that Raven is good. <laughs> okay. Number seven, Bambi. Nice. nice. Pinocchio. Awesome. Susan Kane, and Bicycle Thieves. Nice. There we go. Well, I look forward to your 3 2 1, Toronto. Those are, that's a great list right there. Yeah. Anticipating this. <laughs> All right. Well, in the meantime, um, so you kind of talked about how you, you decided to focus on classic movies, but what really got you started in watching classic movies as a kid? Um, yeah. Yeah. I didn't watch them as much as a kid. Actually, you know what? I think it started from as a kid, I would watch the Twilight Zone. And so right away, the Twilight Zone introduced me to very intriguing plots and stories mm -hmm. and memorable ones, too. And I think so from a young age, I realized that black and white doesn't mean that the it's going to be boring. Like it could still be a really good story kind of thing. So I think I already already had a soft spot for black and white movies when I got into them more. But one thing I love about black and white movies is, um, and some people might say they hate this about them, but they're from such an uh, such su such an innocent time, and they had to uh, live by a certain code, like the Hayes Code and everything, which I know mm -hmm. some people don't like. But I almost, I love the innocence of them. I love that when I'm watching a black and white movie, I never have to worry about um, a scene that would, you know, uh, disturb me. Or I never have to worry about 
I'm, I'm not a fan of like excessive language in movies or anything or gore or anything like that. Basically, mm-hmm. R-rated movies, a lot of R-rated movies. And so like black and white movies, you never have to worry about that when you're turning one on. Um, you can just sit back and enjoy them. And, and I think it's a testament that a movie doesn't have to have all that stuff to be good because look at the whole entire black and white era. That's why I, I have little celebrations when like a PG movie will win a best picture, which hasn't won in years, but yeah. um, it just shows that. And then like, look at the twilight zone um, made in the fifties and sixties is still considered one of the greatest shows of all time. And you won't find anything in it that's bad considered bad and so for me it's just an escape it's something that uh they're so innocent and they're just fun to watch like i love them i love the voice acting how it's a little different Mm -hmm. and um i really do stand by how the story like you can still have an amazing story and it doesn't have to be a movie released in the 2000s yeah definitely and you mentioned the haze code too like I always feel like movies were better with it because yeah. you find creative ways to get around that. I, I don't know. It, it just seemed better. I think that's a good, yeah, a good argument to make. Um, yeah. I, I love that. They had to get more creative with, with what they had. And that's another reason to appreciate it. You see, like for an example, um, I remember seeing Shang-Chi in the theaters. And before I saw Shang-Chi, I watched the Sherlock Jr., the Buster Keaton movie mm. earlier that day. And it's funny because the movie made in the twenties, that's almost a hundred years old had better effects in my opinion than <laughs> Shang-Chi, a movie made in 2021. Like they'd be what I'd be watching it and they're in a library and it was green screened. And then oh. like they're outside and it was green screen when they could have easily filmed on location kind of thing. Yet you watch Buster Keaton and the general pulling off these amazing stunts and using the creativity that has had to be created, it, there's just nothing like them. I just love black and white movies. Yeah. No, that, that's a good one, though. Sure, like Junior. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. I'm, I'm still impressed with how they kept changing the background, and he'd fall into that actual background. That just blows yes. my mind. That whole entire sequence is amazing to me. Yeah. We mentioned uh, Bernardo, the movie geek, in the comments. Um, <laughs> he has a soft spot for silent films, especially Sherlock Jr. And so he like is freaking yeah. out right now. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh it looks like Toronto. Toronto. Yeah, it's close to their top three. Okay. Shoe Shine. I haven't heard of that one. Victoria De Sica. Oh, I think he directed Bicycle Thieves. Yeah, Bicycle Thieves and Umberto D, I believe. But I haven't seen Shoe Shine. I yeah, no, I haven't seen that one. Okay, Rome, Open City, Alberto, Wrestling. Okay, yes, I think that's in the Peter Bardanovich list. That's one of them. I okay. kind of hope it's not because I saw <laughs> I saw <laughs> the original director and I wasn't a big fan of it, but I'll watch it as a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> the last one, Great Dictator. Yeah, you've got a great list there, Toronto. It's you amazing. Seem to like yeah. A lot of European films. I'm I'm impressed with that. Yeah, great list right there. Did you get my three, two, one? Oh, yes. Yes, we did. Can't wait for Miracle in Milan. Oh, yeah. That's a, a new criterion coming out. And it's oh, from, okay. Yeah, I think it's also from Vittorio De Sica, but I could be wrong. So, yeah. All right. Well, I've got a couple more questions here. And I want to be respectful of your time, Ethan. Oh, you're good. So what's the oldest movie you've ever seen? Um, I think it's like are we talking full length movie or just like oldest? Because like the trip to the moon, that yeah. one where it's like 10 minutes long or 15 minutes long, that's the oldest thing I've ever seen. But do you want like a full length movie? You can do either one. I'm okay with that one. Okay. I'll stick with the moon one because I can't think of the other one right now. I know okay. I've seen I know Cabinet of Doctor Dr. Caligari is like 1920. Or 21. Yeah. I think it's 20. And I've seen that one. So that's over 100. And then I want to say I might have seen the movie from 1919. Maybe like a Chaplin movie. Like w- The Kid is a really old one, but I can't remember what year it came out. Oh, I want to say 20 or 21. Yeah. So something in 1920 and then The Trip to the Moon one. I've seen that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're great films. I like both. Yeah. Of them. 
Agreed. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, recently on a uh, canopy, they have this like Edison album collection. It's like all the Edison shorts. Ooh. And I've been watching that. It's really interesting because they put it in like chronological order. Seeing how film kind of progressed even in those decades from like 1890 to 1910. Like even yeah. that's a huge developmental stage. How fascinating. That's awesome. Yeah. So just seeing that development and then thinking about nowadays from like the 20s, 30s, all the way to now, even that's crazy too. So that, yes. Very interesting stuff. Cool. At least I've ever seen this. <laughs> Birth of a Nation help me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a. I've never seen that either, but I've heard the controversy behind it. That's a tough watch. I won't lie. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen all of it. I think the oldest feature length, though, would probably be Intolerance. I really liked that one. Okay, cool. I've heard of it, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, I think it's I think it's more worth watching than a Birth of the Nation. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Oh, okay. I think I've seen that one. Is that when there's like a, let's see, a guy and a girl walking in a garden? I want to say I've seen that one in film history class. No, I haven't seen it, so I'm not sure. That's pretty cool, though. Yeah. First movie. All right. Well, have you been to any film festivals, like the Turner Classic ones or anything like that? No, I want to, but um, it's just hasn't happened i try to uh i haven't been to any film festivals but i always try to see when my favorite movies are playing in the theaters mm -hmm. um so i just saw singing in the rain earlier this week in theaters and then i i have a list on letterboxd of movies i've seen in the theaters that are considered classics mm -hmm. inceptions on that list because i didn't see that originally so basically any movie that i didn't see in theaters in its original run um i add it to the list but that's the closest I've come, but I definitely would like to go to film festivals in the future. Like it, especially the TCM one very much so fascinates me. Yes. Yeah. Well, I was just told about one in Palm Springs, kind of close to where I live called the mm. Arthur Lyons Film Noir Festival. Ooh, that sounds cool. Yeah. I'm really excited for that. And hopefully it turns out good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. But yeah, it, if you're ever in the area, I guess that happens in May. So <laughs> Okay, cool. Good to know. All right. Let's see. Forties era was a wonderful era for movies. A lot of talent. I agree with that. That it it really was a great era. And uh probably the end of the golden age of Hollywood, I think. Yeah. Like the fifties, they're okay, but like a lot of like, kind of campy B movies in my opinion though. Mm -hmm. All right, turn on my, it's two seconds. Okay. Intolerance. Your first second film is much worthwhile. Yeah, agreed. It's a lot more worthwhile. All right. Well do you guys have any questions for me or Nathan? I, this is a great opportunity to ask either of us questions. Yeah. Besides if I'm going to watch Flea tonight. No, yeah. <laughs> I, I know you mentioned it earlier. I haven't heard of that one. Flea? Yeah. Yeah, so it's a it's an animated foreign documentary from last year. Yeah, oh, it was okay. Yeah, it was nominated for best animated and best documentary and I've never seen an animated documentary film. So it's fascinating so far. Um but Michelle is a big fan of it. And I'm a fan of Marty. So that was like the trade. Like, I'll give you a movie I'm a fan of. Oh, and okay. So it worked out well. But um, yeah. Oh, Potter Pimpuff. That was 1952. Because, oh, yeah, because I just saw the 70th anniversary of it. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, that would be a fun one to see in theaters. Uh, singing in the Rain. It was amazing. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Like, not that I didn't like it before, but like seeing it dancing on the big screen was amazing. Yeah. Although the only problem I really have with that movie, it seemed like the the casino or got a dance sequence 
seems so out of left field, out of nowhere. I, I didn't understand why that was a thing. <laughs> is it the that like Broadway melody one? Yeah, like yeah, the movie, he like singing, and then it transitions into it. Yeah, as he's picking his idea for the movie, that is that does feel out of place to me. It's like a whole like 10, 15 minute sequence, and it's amazing, but it, it doesn't. I I kind of agree that it's out of place. Like I appreciate it, but I'm like, okay, it was weird. Yeah, <laughs> I guess whatever. <laughs> yeah, sure. An awkward actor, Harrison Flea is amazing and should have won at least one Oscar. Yeah, that was Michelle <laughs> with Flea? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, Michelle wants to leave. Okay. I didn't even bother watching the Oscars. I I just didn't want to put the time into it. Yeah, you didn't miss anything. <laughs> Honestly. And even like the rewards that were won were very predictable this year. There were no shocks. And so it was it was fine. Yeah. Okay. It just seemed weird though, the ones I did because I really wanted Dune to win. It yeah. won so many of the other awards, but not Best Picture. It just doesn't make any sense. Like it's all based on what they win, like leading up to the award ceremony, and Dune wasn't in the conversations. It was really between Coda and the power of the dog, and Coda took it, of course. But I was happy with Coda's win. I also like when PG 13 movies win, so I was happy yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? What was Titanic the last one? Um, PG 13 win? Yeah. No, so Green Book won in 2018, oh, and then The Artist in 2011 won. Okay. And then there are a few others, so like Million Dollar Baby, Return of the King. Um, a Beautiful Mind was one. Hmm. I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm probably missing some, but there's a few. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but PG, I, I don't know the last PG winner. I know Life of Pi was nominated, Hugo was nominated, but they didn't win. So, yeah, I couldn't even tell you what the PG one was. Probably like some movie in the 60s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I got a couple more qu questions for you. Um, okay, cool. So, you're a heavy letterbox user. Yeah. And, uh, what do you recommend for kind of newcomers or? People who aren't too familiar with it, what to do with Letterbox? That's a great question because um, Letterbox at first, I was trying to get into it and I actually got an account back in high school and I never used it again. And then when I got on my mission back in 2017, I was like, you know what, let's give it another try. And I recommend just using the features that you have available to you because even as a normal member, like not being a pro or a patron, you can still do things such as um, make lists comment on users reviews and everything the list feature is amazing to me i love making lists i love commenting mm -hmm. on people's lists and looking at other people's lists i've i've done that long before i use letterbox i would like write them down in notebooks and or my journals and stuff so right. i would just say use the the nice features of them because like another thing i'll add movies to my watch list and if there's a night where i'm like you know I, I feel like watching a western movie i'll go to my watch list and just filter the genre by westerns oh. only and so little things like that and then it's nice to like once you've logged every movie you've seen you can uh filter a list to like only include movies i haven't seen things like that where there are just so many amazing features for any movie lover so i'd say that really try to dive down into like what's offered and just like roll with it but don't get addicted to it because it's easy to do that <laughs> yeah i i kind of feel like i'm addicted to it <laughs> i like whenever it's not working i'm like now what do i do with my life <laughs> right <laughs> what do i do now <laughs> yeah exactly yeah because i was looking at my watch list because i just keep adding movies to it i have like 1700 movies i'm like when am i gonna get to all of these <laughs> that's amazing wow i have like i think i'm i think my watch is around five or six hundred but that's impressive. Yeah. Well, Don't good. give up on them. <laughs> right. <laughs> take a while. I hope it lasts long enough that I can go through the list. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. No kidding. No, but I'm also like a huge nerd. Like I made an Excel file too with all of them and that seems to last a while longer. <laughs> I definitely have Excel files for movies as well, so no shame. <laughs> 
Awesome. All right. Now, uh, kind of more questions about your channel itself. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see. What do you recommend for people who want to review movies but maybe don't know exactly how to review a movie? Um, I, I think that – so specifically like making videos for reviewing movies? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I – okay. There are some tips to remember that when you're making a video – you want to get people watching within the first 10 seconds. Otherwise they're going to click off. And so if you start a movie review and you're sitting in a closet with the lights on and it's just like, you're only based off that light or like you have no lights on and it's awful mm -hmm. sound quality, then no one's going to watch the review. And the whole point of making videos is you want to, you know, you want to get your opinion out there. And so I would say that make sure you have the kind of setup where first off you can grab the viewer's attention. Um, but then I would also say, try to be unique. You know, like um, the other day on Twitter, someone said, I'm trying for black and white movie related videos. Which movies would you like to see? And I responded and I said, this is a great idea, but don't do 12 Angry Men. And they responded and they were like, why? Like That was the first movie I was going to talk about. And I was like, exactly. Like everyone talks about 12 Angry Men. Like we know it's a great movie and I'm guilty. I've made a video on 12 Angry Men, but mm -hmm. The thing is, we know 12 Angry Men is an amazing movie. Tell me about a movie I've never seen before. Or tell me about a movie, like, even if they did something like Maltese Falcon, which is well known, but, like, no one's talking about it. You know what I mean? Right, and so right. I would say, like, obviously do the videos that you want to do, but try to be different in the videos you talk about because that on its own helps you stand out. Mm -hmm. Now, I could contradict, I could play devil's advocate and say you won't get as many views because no one's talking about it. But right. if you're really just trying to get an opinion out there and you're talking about the newest Marvel movie, odds are someone else has the same opinion kind of thing. And so it's going to be harder for you to be heard. And that that's just my opinion on it. Um, so I, I say do what you want to do and make sure you have your opinion on it too. So mm -hmm. I don't know if that helps at all. <laughs> no, yeah, no, thank you. I I agree with that a lot. Like, like recently I reviewed Jamaica Inn. Like, I've never heard anyone talk about Jamaica Inn. <laughs> yeah, know? exactly, exactly. And a lot, a lot of people know who Charles Lawton is. Like, I want to make an entire video focused on Charles Lawton because he's such an underrated actor. But um, yeah. I like what Bernardo said when he's making a video. He's just he's himself and embraces his identity and talks about what he loves. Yeah, it's exactly. Mm -hmm. Also have fun with it. I agree with that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm just looking at these comments. That's awesome. Third man. Uh I haven't seen the third man. I believe that's one that I'm gonna be watching at the film festival though. That's actually that's the uh the challenge too. So you'll be getting to it, but Third Man is amazing. It has Orson Welles and Joseph Cotton in it as well. And um, directed by Carol Reed. But I've only seen it once. It has a really funky score. Like it sounds like you're watching a SpongeBob episode in a black and white movie. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. But like it, it's really good. I, and I really am excited to rewatch it. Potter Pygmy Puff is actually a friend of mine. We can We can watch it together when we hang out again if you want. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just realized I'm watching Touch of Evil. That's what it is. I get them mixed up. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, Touch of Evil. Yeah, they're both noir, both with Orson Welles, and so easy to mix up. Yes. Touch of Evil is amazing, by the way. That's like my favorite Orson Welles movie. I'm really excited, too, because I love the poster on it. I believe it's with Charlton Heston. It's a yeah. really cool-looking poster. Oh, and it's so good. And I just saw that they're doing a 4K release of it, and it looks amazing. Yes. Yeah, I want it just for displaying, because like, I already own the movie, but I want to buy a new version, because it's so beautiful. Oh, still do it, Bernardo. It's so nice to have your complete... I am so pro trying to have every single movie you've ever seen on your letterbox. Like I know some people, I don't know how you are, but I know some people will go the route of they only do what movies they've seen while using the app. And that mm -hmm. works too. But like for me, for my purposes, 
I like trying to remember everything I've seen because then in those moments where you're filtering by like what you haven't seen, it's right. much more accurate and it's just all around more accurate. So although I can't remember every movie, I have a good grasp. Like randomly, I'll, I'll think of a movie like, oh, I got to add that. But it's good enough grasp. Yeah. No, I, funny enough, I've actually used some of your lists, like your 2013 one. Oh, nice. I've forgotten so many movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's awesome that's exactly how i did it too i looked at other people's lists i would look at lists where it's like my top 1000 favorite movies and i'd be like thanks and like go through it and just add everything. <laughs> yeah exactly just add everything i've seen even if i don't add a rating i just put that i've seen it yeah no that, it's too difficult to do the rating and that you've seen it mm -hmm. absolutely especially because it's like sometimes it's too unfair to um rate it when you haven't seen it in like 20 years or whatever yeah no exactly because I, I don't know about you but i've changed my opinions on lots of movies over the years <laughs> oh yeah absolutely i didn't like touch of evil at first that's a good example right there i saw it in high school and i gave it like a three out of five and on a rewatch i was like what the heck is wrong with me this is amazing <laughs> <laughs> so it's like really good that's great I hope the third man gets rid of Ooh, you and me both, Bernardo. That one, it has a DVD release, and it's like, or no, it it has a, wait, maybe it's only DVD. And if it has a Blu-ray, it's very rare. It's like the rarest criterion ever. So I hope they re-release yeah. it. Yeah, that's the bum thing about criterion is they make such a limited amount. Yeah. You have to go to eBay. <laughs> I know, right? But I have the crummy, like, Blu-ray of The Third Man, actually conveniently right here. <laughs> it's, oh, like, so, it's like, I haven't even opened it yet, and I've had it for a long time. But, yeah, anyways, I'll be watching it soon for the challenge. Mm -hmm. awesome. Well, do you have any questions for me, Nathan, while I got you here? Well, I'm wondering um, what, like, so... Your favorite 40s movie is Casablanca. Is that your favorite black and white movie as well? Favorite black and white and favorite movie of all time. Re okay, wow. So we both have a favorite 40s movie. That's so cool. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, yeah. What are some of your other favorite movies? Mm. Like not in the 40s, just like, do you have like a top three, or top five or anything? I'll pull up my letterbox. <laughs> hey, there you go. There you go. Uh. I can't say it off the top of my head. And it changes all the time. That's the fun part, right? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Okay, let's see. Number one, Casablanca. Number two is Metropolis from 1927. Oh, Bernardo will be happy. Oh, yeah? He loves silent films. Oh, true. Yes. Yeah. I really like that one especially because I'm a huge science fiction fan, so I love seeing oh, it. Yeah just the beginnings of science fiction movies. It's really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. And then the third one, it's kind of a toss up because I like all the Lord of the Rings, but I put at the moment two towers. Um, Interesting. That's usually like, I feel like it's usually like the least of the three, but like, I like hearing that it's your favorite. Yeah. I don't know. The, the battle of Helm's deep is impressive to me. So I good. Love that. I love that. And I love how they're kind of connecting with Gollum. I like that aspect of it. And I don't know. I just love the Rohan and the Rohirrim. They're, they're awesome. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Have you read the books for Lord of the Rings? No, I own them and I want to read them. I was thinking about reading them this year before that. I'm looking up. I have them up on the shelf. But um, I was thinking reading them before the series comes out. I know it's not. The books but it's like the world and everything so i was interested in reading them it's on the yeah. bucket list it's on my bucket list too because every time i try i don't know if you've ever tried before but i get to like the tom bombadil section of fellowship and i just can't get past that <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've never actually attempted it so but noted I'll, I'll prepare myself for that section yeah like they're in the fellowship or no they're in the shire for like 200 pages or something crazy like that <laughs> sweet i'm excited <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh got some questions here dumbo's one of my favorites also sad it is it's very yes. sad too 
Have you seen Philadelphia Story? Yes, uh, both of us. You've seen it, right, Nathan? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It didn't make my list, but I do like it a lot. <laughs> it's Metropolis. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there he is. Uh, let's see. Story. Top five movies right now. Okay. The Princess Mononoke. Ooh, I've seen parts of that one. Um, I'm not really into anime, but I'll probably give that another chance. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it. If you're not into anime, I don't know if you'll like it. <laughs> I'll just be flat out. Yeah. <laughs> it's a very, it's a very artsy movie. It's not bad, but you, it, you had to be into it, I think, to really appreciate it. Yeah, because my brother, he's obsessed with anime. He tried getting me to watch them, and I watched my neighbor Totoro and. There's no story to it, so I, I didn't appreciate it or like it. Yeah. And that's too bad because like that one is one of the more like accessible ones, I'd say. So if you don't like that one, then you probably won't like Princess Mononoke. Oh man, I, I guess I'm just too old fashioned or something. Hey, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Almost subjective, right? Yep. Okay, number two, call me by your name. Uh, was that at la last year's Academy? I'm I'm trying to remember what that I was. Right. Name, 2017 with uh, Timothy Chalamet, Army Hammer. Oh, oh, that one. I'm yeah. thinking of a different movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, different movie. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Three, Red Turtle. I haven't heard of Red Turtle. Is that another uh, anime or? I don't know if it's, I know it's animated, but I haven't seen oh, it. Okay. I don't know if it's anime. Gotcha. But I know, I know images from it and I don't think it's anime. But okay. I could be wrong. It could be like a different form of anime or something. I don't think it is, though. Spirited Away. Is that nice. Worst one? <laughs> <laughs> Can't remember. It's Sound of Music. Yes. All right. I love the yeah, Sound of Music right here, the box set. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I amazing. have it on DHS. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Nice. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got a question here. Which forties movie? Which forties movies that you want to see and have not yet? Oh, well, <laughs> let it box the <laughs> right. Let me pull my list here. The problem is, at first, I made this idea of putting like different decades in a specific list and then adding yeah. my watch list in there. Uh huh. But the problem now is there are over like three hundred movies now, so I don't know. <laughs> That's where. Well, that's why I love features because I'll just go on my watch list and filter it to the year, to the decade 1940. It's like so yeah. nice to do. And so, and then you can sort it however you want, whether it's like the earliest or the highest. So I'm going to sort it to the average highest rating first to see what everyone else is thinking. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like the shoe, I've never seen that. Um, out of the past is one I'm watching this weekend, so I'll say that one for my answer. But there's a it's a long list, everyone. I have a lot of <laughs> 40s films to watch. Just because it's at the top, I'll just put Rebecca. That's my one I want okay. to watch. Okay, Rebecca is good. I think it's like I've seen it three or four times, and so I can say this, but I don't think it's as good as everyone says it is. But it's still definitely mm. like a good movie. Okay. So yeah, take that for what it's worth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's your letterbox account? Well, I actually don't know the name of it because I used to have another channel and they don't let you change the name of it. So I don't remember what I called it before. <laughs> nice. Does your uh, profile say it? Oh, here we go. It's underscore Hawaii Harry. <laughs> nice. That's a cool name. Yeah. It goes with your shirt. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do uh, surfing through cinema, but I uh, same thing with you. I wanted to focus on older movies more because no one's talking yeah. about them. I used to be the cinema surfer. That's funny. Really? <laughs> this was like years ago when I was in high school. And mm -hmm. like, I still have the channel up. If you type in the cinema surfer, you'll see my old videos. But oh my goodness, it's old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was yours too? Like, you wanted to be like channel surfing? Is that what you went with? Cinema uh, it. Honestly, I got the idea because at Disney Channel, they had the theme movie surfers. And I was like, hmm, uh, I'll, do that. I'll do cinema <laughs> surfer. But yeah, it was the idea of surfing through channels, um, talking about different things. 
And my friends to this day, they still think I should change it back to cinema server because it just like works well. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think I'm kind of finding the niche and just using my name. I don't know though. I still might change. I'm always I'm like random. I was like, I should change my channel name and like everyone else who watches it. Like, Stop changing your name, probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah, I see you watched Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. <laughs> oh, I love that movie so much. Same. That's a that's a favorite of mine. Yes, uh, I've seen it. I've seen it too many times. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> uh -huh. But I have some relatives that when they first saw it, they were deeply offended by it because they're from Idaho. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's. It's just so stereo. It's so true. Like it's so accurate though. Like I served in Idaho on my mission and lived there uh, for school and like, yeah, it's, it's very accurate. And I'm not saying that to this Idaho cause I love Idaho, hmm. but I love Napoleon Dynamite too. So I love both. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, we got some more. Third man, Moonrise, Double Indemnity, Mortal Storm. Yeah, okay, those are the ones that Bernardo wants to watch. Those are all great movies. Moonrise isn't as good, I will say that, but Third Man, Double Indemnity, and Mortal Storm are amazing. I wanted Third Man. Actually, Third Man, the first time I saw it, it was a 10 out of 10, but I haven't seen it in maybe three years, and so mm -hmm. I changed it to a 9 just to like have it sit on there, and on a rewatch, I'm going to decide, but I didn't include it on this list because it's been too long, but like on a rewatch that will probably be on the top 10. Cause I just really remember really liking it. So we'll see though. And double yeah. indemnity was also a really good one that was considered, but didn't make it. Yeah. I don't know about that one. I, I liked it, but I don't know. I, I think it, cause that's a, what's his name? Billy Wilder. Yes. That's a Billy yeah. Wilder film, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it's like the most stereotypical noir ever. Like the this things they say are hilarious today's standard, but I love it. It's so good. Yes. <laughs> What's another Billy Wilder film? Uh, saw the apartment. Do you like the apartment at all by him? Yeah, I didn't like it on the first watch, but on the second watch, I was like, "What the heck? This movie's amazing." So, uh, okay. I do like it a lot. Okay, maybe I There's need to give it a lot too. Yeah. I might need to give that another go because I didn't like it very much the first time. <laughs> Dude, neither did I. I, I thought, uh, for me, I thought Jack Lemon was like ham acting, like way overacting, and it was just annoying to me. But yeah. on a rewatch, I don't know what it was. I think I was just less critical of him, but I really liked it. Um, but yeah, if you're ever looking for Billy Wilder recommendations, I've seen his complete filmography, which I can't say yeah. about a lot of directors. So yeah, yes. I, I have I have the recommendations if you need them. <laughs> Yes. No, I remember that video you did. Um, oh, yeah. That yeah, was kind of like the start of the low-key series I have where I rank director's filmographies. Because mm -hmm. I know you're you're close to finishing Hitchcock, right? Yes. I have been – I'm four movies away, and I could do it anytime I want. But I'm kind of like – Hitchcock is just a summer movie kind of guy for me. I don't know why, but mm -hmm. I love watching his movies in the summer. So probably in – june july august especially when i do hitchcock month on the channel you'll definitely mm -hmm. see an influx of hitchcock movies on my letterbox <laughs> awesome yeah yeah speaking of hitchcock like what do you recommend watching his movies because so many of them are not streaming they're you can barely get them on dvd like yeah. how are, what do you recommend for that well so i own a lot of them but um i i I am a huge advocate for using the library. Like I know I've already said that, but it's insane. Like if your library is anything like mine, and I imagine it is you being in California and everything, but mm -hmm. if anything like mine, there's a very large assortment. And if your library doesn't have it, you can go online and search like the library county and you mm -hmm. can like put it on hold and they'll ship it to the library and then you can pick it up. And so even if your library doesn't have it, odds are another library will have it. It's amazing. And I know that it's not just a Utah thing because Arizona does the exact same thing. So you mm -hmm. might have that same system, but I would just recommend searching it. And they have those old movies that no one's ever heard of. Like that's how I've been watching a lot of movies. And so, yeah, then we'll use a library. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never even thought of that, but that, that's probably it's free. 
It's amazing. Sometimes libraries charge for your library card if you mm -hmm. if you live outside the area, but it's honestly it still cancels out the money you would spend on renting movies and stuff. So yeah, I recommend no. it. Now I'll have to check. I'm sure. I'm sure where I'm at has it because I'm not too far from LA, so I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. What is the movie you've seen the most in theaters? Oh, I just calmed in my bed. <laughs> oh, you're good. Spider Man: No Way Home five times. You saw it five times. I didn't... <laughs> yeah, I I purposely saw it because before. I had seen Infinity War four times, and I wanted Spider-Man to take the honor, so I had to see it at least five times, and then I stopped it at five. But yeah, I was never tired of it either. I loved it every time. Gotcha. Uh, maybe Dune, because I saw that one. I think I saw that one two or three times. Nice. I don't know about you. I'm one of those people that wants to watch it once and then give it some time before I watch it again. Yeah. I'm usually like that, although I just literally saw Spider-Man five times. But I usually <laughs> am like, I try to be shown in the movie I see twice, let alone five times. <laughs> but yeah, of yeah, course, Spider-Man, Infinity War, I saw four times. And then three times I've seen movies three times. And two times are pretty often. But yeah, it depends on the movie. Okay. Oh, Samuel Stevens. He's going to have his list. I'm really looking forward to that. It meets everything, everywhere, all at once. Three times. You heard of nice. that. So My first movie that. I saw three times was X-Men Days of Future Past. Oh, okay. Yeah, in the theaters, that is. I've seen other movies more than three times. Gotcha. Are you a fan of the X-Men movies, or did you just want to watch it? Um, I, I wouldn't even say I'm a fan. I like I really like that. I like the first class and Days of Future Past. Hmm. Those to me are like amazing movies, but I've only seen the original X-Men movies like once or twice, and it's been years since I've watched them. And so um, I need to rewatch them. I still have not seen the one where he's in Japan or whatever. I think it's just called Wolverine. I've yes, never seen Wolverine. Uh -huh. Yeah, that one I've seen parts of two or three times. Still haven't seen it all the way through. <laughs> Gotcha. Well, it's it's definitely better than the Origins movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've seen Origins. That one's, like, laughably bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. So, three times in the Batman. I haven't seen the Batman yet. I'm, I'm hesitant. You haven't seen Batman yet? No. <laughs> That's good. That's a good one. It's, uh, it's definitely dark. Very, very dark. <laughs> um, but, I yeah, I liked it. I don't like it as much as other people are saying, though. <laughs> I'm sorry, Harrison. Did you say you haven't heard of everything everywhere all at once? Currently the highest rated film on Letterboxd. I might have heard of it. Is, is that the one with the guy from uh, Indiana Jones? Like, he's coming back for that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I know of it, but I haven't seen it, no. I haven't seen it either, and I don't think it deserves number one on Letterboxd. I haven't seen it, so I know that's unfair, but it should be out longer before they just give it number one. Yeah. At least give it a week. <laughs> you know? Well, like I think it should I think it should they should give it like a few months or even a year. Like Parasite has been number one for years, but like there's um, over a million ratings on it, whereas everything everywhere all at once. I don't know how many ratings it has now, but it doesn't have a million, that's for sure. And so I think they should just like let it be released m more, like wide release before they claim that because they did that before it was even wide released. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> but yes, I well, believe it's amazing. I'm excited to see it. Yeah, I'm kind of one of those people too that that wants to wait a little bit just to because a lot of people they get really excited, they say it's amazing. But then when you watch it again, it's terrible, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I'm one of those that kind of waits it out. Like, I just watched Zack Snyder's Justice League for the first time. I thought it was terrible. <laughs> yeah, I still haven't seen it, and I probably will never watch it. <laughs> it's, it doesn't – it's a terrible movie. But, like, the original story that. was terrible anyways. So it's like – Yeah. They didn't really change the original movie. And – I don't know what the big deal was. You know? It's the Snyder fans. They're just going crazy. 
and that's why I waited. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You're calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther. <laughs> hey. Nice Drake and Josh reference there. Yes. I love Drake and Josh. Great show. All right. Well, this is more than 1940s, guys. Sorry, but <laughs> <laughs> but no, this has been great. Oh, here we go. We got Samuel's list. I'll read it from 10 to 1. The gun for hire, or this gun for hire, rather. Okay, I haven't heard of that one. Hi, Sierra. Ooh, that's one on my watch list. It was Same. actually made made on the, part of it was made where I grew up. So that's one of the reasons why I want to watch it. Um, nice. Yeah, I, I want to see that one too. Scott of the Antarctic. I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> I don't think I have either. Uh, let's see. Went the day well. That one out of the past. Um, cat people. I think I've heard of cat people. If it's the one of that's a criterion, yeah. Okay. Shout out a doubt. Okay, there we go. Another Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah, yeah nice. Dark Passage. Oh, that sounds so familiar, but I can't. I can't put a, a title to it, or not a title, a poster to it. That one's another Humphrey Bogart movie. I think that's the one. Someone was telling me about it earlier. I think like, yeah, there's like a first person perspective for like 20 minutes of the movie or something, which sounds super interesting to me. Yeah, that'd be cool to see in a 40s movie. Yeah. I wonder how they did it because they didn't really have handheld cameras then. Great question. <laughs> okay. Treasure of Sierra Madre. That's one I, I really want to watch. It's a great movie. And Casablanca. Okay. Well, that's a great list, Samuel. You seem to be a Humphrey Bogart fan. Oh, oh yeah. Humphrey. Have you ever heard of Humphrey Bogart? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's awesome. I'm adding lists. I'm adding the movies from your list right now to watch lists and stuff because they sound very fascinating. Yeah. The movie geek gotta go. Have a good night and great stream. I give a sub to your channel. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks, bro. Cat people, the prequel to cats. <laughs> yep, that's it. My no, girl. I still haven't seen that one, I, and I really don't want to. <laughs> yeah, same. I'll only watch that if I'm like with a bunch of friends and we're ready to just like laugh. Mm -hmm. Apparently, the play is like. So bad it's good. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of intrigued by that because I want to say it's Andrew Lloyd Webber, right? Who did that one? Who did Cats? Um, yes, I think so. I'm not sure. <laughs> so I like uh, I like Phantom of the Opera. That's a pretty good one by him. Mm -hmm. um, all right. Well. Real quick, and then I'll let you go here. I want to be respectful of your time. Um, what are your favorite things to do other than movies? Like, do you have any other hobbies or things you like to do? Yeah, so um, I love reading. I've been reading a lot more in the last two years. Um, so on the last book of the Narnia series, first time reading it. Mm. And that's been fun. Read self-help books. Um, I like being outside. Like, <laughs> I like uh, disc golfing going on hikes, um, just hanging out with friends, trying new restaurants kind of thing. Um, yeah. And then right now school is a big part of life. So I like learning about healthcare administration, I'll say, because that's what I'm getting. Yeah. My in. yeah so <laughs> it's good. I like it. Well, good. You like long walks on the beach too, right? No. Exactly. <laughs> yep. That's my profile right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, I guess I like the outdoors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Well, I grew up in a, a mountain community, so it's like I didn't like camping because I'm already in the forest. Like, what, yeah. what more can I do? <laughs> I love the forest. That's like my favorite setting. I want to live in the forest. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't recommend where I grew up because it snows a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. I, I actually grew up in a snowy forest, too. I was in northern Arizona. We got a oh, lot of snow. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah. people are always surprised when they hear California gets snow. What? Yeah, it gets they were, snow. Yeah. They with Arizona. Arizona. Yep. 
exact same thing. Like when I was living in Idaho, they're like, oh, you're from Arizona. You're not used to this cold. And I'm like, actually, uh, I kind of am. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. It's like, oh, do you know how to do four-wheel drive? Yes. I have chains, four-wheel drive, all of that. I do all of that. Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> oh, Michelle says, yes, it was Andrew Lloyd Webber for uh, Cats. Okay. okay. I wasn't sure. <laughs> I'm I'm not much of a theater kid, but I like some musicals here and there. Michelle has a list of recommendations for you if you need them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to speak for you, Michelle, but I just know that you do. <laughs> I, think I like the some of the Rodgers and Hammerstein, but that that's like the extent of it. Mm -hmm. Hammerstein, I don't, I don't know. It's whatever it is. Yeah. He he he. Yep. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Nathan. This has been a blast. Yeah, really absolutely. Great. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah. And uh, most of you already follow Nathan, but if you don't, make sure to follow him on his YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, go ahead and plug your stuff, too. I don't want to say the names wrong. <laughs> oh, no, you're totally fine. Yeah, so YouTube, it's Nathan Hill Classics, as written right there. I totally missed the box. It's like... The, re the reflection is like reverse, so I can't even. There you go. What? There you go. See, look, it's the box. It's the box on this screen right here. There you go. <laughs> Use those hard, a lot harder than it should have been. Um, and then letterbox. I'm Cinema Nate, and Instagram. I'm Cinema Nate. So it's Cinema underscore N, and then letter eight. So that's where you can find me. Let me see if I can. Okay, I'll edit my name real quick. So that's what you can where you can find me on Letterboxd and Instagram. And Instagram is really fun because I have polls where you can vote for like which movie you like more. And then I just post for like actors birthdays. I talk about movies I watched in the last month. And then Letterboxd, like Harrison said, I'm a very active user. So yes. if you <laughs> like that. And I try to leave reviews for every movie I see for the first time. So there's always reviews. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Thanks yeah. for having me. Absolutely. We got to do this again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. That'd be really fun. I love talking to oldies, so I'm all I'm always down. Yeah. Well, next month will be the 50s, so if you're available in May, we'll be doing the 50s. I actually got a message from uh, Tirana, Tirana, and um, on Instagram saying oh. that it'd be cool if us three did um, the 50s together. So that's something that we could think sure. about too. Absolutely, I'd love to do that. Awesome. Oh, I got that message too. Absolutely, we'll do that, Tirana. Cool. Okay. Sweet. Plan on that. All right. all right. Well, thank you all so much for coming on today. This has been Really All Movies. I'm Harrison Stone. This is my guest, Nathan Hale. Take care, everyone.